So welcome everybody to Family Feud, your internship success. We are really excited to be sharing today and give you some really great tips about how um, to successfully find, um, work out, and uh, do things in your internship so you can make the most of that opportunity. Uh, so after we do this presentation, we are going to have our Family Feud game. And so it's really important that you pay attention to the presentation because that's where the survey questions are going to be coming from. And that's where the survey answers are coming from. So make sure that you do pay uh, attention, feel free to take notes uh, and that can help you throughout the game afterwards. So um, welcome, we're gonna get started here uh, with the presentation. So of course we have our amazing Steve Harvey uh, joining us today uh, for uh, this information. So as we get started, um, really it's important to think about what is it that you want to do for your internship um, and what goals should you consider? And so no matter where you are in your process of um, thinking about internship, maybe you've already applied, maybe you're in an internship right now and just wanting to get some, um, some good information so you can make the most of it while you're currently there but really getting started is key. And so really considering what are your goals, your interests, and how would this internship contribute to that? And then where do you look? What do you, how do you even find these opportunities? So of course, there's lots of different ways to do that. And this list here will uh, give you some really great um, uh, resources and information for that. But really, uh, it's important to, to think about where are we going to find these? And so as such, what I wanna do is I want to share with you all uh, information about um, uh, Handshake and where to find those opportunities. And so we're gonna open up Handshake here. Um, Handshake is uh, our job board. It also has information for internships, events, and it's where you would go to uh, make an appointment with your career advisor. So in the May Center here, we have career advisors available to work with you uh, on whatever aspects of your career development uh, and your goals, uh, what those might be. And so uh, definitely want to utilize Handshake as much as possible in this process. So here in Handshake, when you log in, this is what you'll see. So it's um, really easy to navigate and to, to check out, but you can go to jobs, you can look up specific companies, um, you can connect with other uh, students here at uh, a and San Antonio, and then also to um, think about career paths, um, events that are happening. Tomorrow we have a really huge event. It's going to be our career fair for all majors, and it's not just for jobs, but internships as well. If you're thinking about a summer internship, then um, a lot of companies are actually looking now for summer interns. So it's a great idea to join the career fair tomorrow. And you can find that here uh, on Handshake and in the events uh, area. But let's talk about internships and where would you find an internship. So once you're logged in, you want to just click on the jobs tab here. And then it's going to take you to a place where you can filter and find opportunities. And so you can, of course, do specific searches. So if you want to do something within your major or you know the specific career that you want to pursue, you can look that up. Um, and then you can filter um, in all different ways here. So let's just click internships just for fun and let's see what it comes up. So just clicking internships, there are two 2.4 thousand jobs, so 2,400 jobs found in the Handshake system for internship. It has internship in the name, it has internship in the title somehow. That's a lot, like, oh my gosh. I know in this COVID time, we don't always know exactly, you know, what, um, is available and we've heard, heard a lot of things about companies not uh, doing internships and stuff. And so this right here is really um, good to know um, because for me, I feel like, wow, there probably is a lot more opportunity out there. Now, of course you can filter. Um, so you can use the filters um, if you wanna do a full-time, a part-time, um, maybe you only want a paid internship, wouldn't blame you there. <laughs> paid roles are really great and important. Uh, or maybe you want to um, think about, you know, the industry, some different uh, functions that you might be doing. Again, what, uh, how it relates to your major could be important, or if you just have a specific employer in mind as well. Of course, you can also um, focus on location. So if you want to just stay in the San Antonio area, 
then we can do a search uh, for San Antonio. So here we have 132. Wow, that's still a great, great amount of opportunities. So once you're in the system, once you have your filters all in place and you have your list, uh, what you can do is you will be able to see all of the information about that internship. You can click on it specifically and it'll take you um, to all the details within Handshake. So you can really look at and review and figure out, okay, what is that? What is it that I need to be eligible, qualified for this kind of position? Uh, and so you can see the full description. Um, get to know what the company's about. A lot of companies are going to be putting um, their information so you can, again, make those connections and think about, is this going to be uh, the kind of company I'd want to work for and the kind of place that I'd, I'd like to be? Uh, now, a couple of tips when looking at qualifications for internships is um, some of the qualifications, maybe you don't feel as confident that you need them. Uh, and I hear this a lot. I've been doing this for, for several years as um, a career counselor, and now I'm the internship coordinator here at Mays. And so with this information um, in, in qualifications, I always like to tell students, you know, um, if you meet like 75, 80% of the qualifications still apply, especially if it's a company you really want to work for, and let them decide if you're not qualified. Um, and also to read the wording. Sometimes it'll say like preferred or uh, recommended. Well, definitely those are more open words. That means they're not um, hard and fast to what you would need to be qualified. Um, so they're willing to, to be flexible and work within what your experience is uh, and the skills that you're bringing to the table already. Now, sometimes they might say like, you know, must have or, you know, something very specific like must have one year social media experience with measurable outcomes. If it's a, something like that and you know you absolutely don't have it, uh, then yeah, you might want to reconsider if you might be as qualified for it. But again, for internships, it's usually very open and uh, a little bit more broad because they know that you're still learning. And so that's important to, to think about too. Um, so again, utilizing Handshake for this kind of information you're going to get all kinds of details um, here in the system, and then it can connect you to uh, other places and people. Um, they have the apply buttons there. Uh, a lot of times you can just apply through Handshake. Now, if you do that, I do want to recommend that you have your um, your profile completely filled out, like you're 100% complete on your Handshake profile because they will look at that. And so how you do that is just here at the top right corner, there is, um, it's gonna be your profile. So you can go and click on my profile and then it helps you to fill out all of these different areas and it'll tell you how complete your profile is as well. Um, so, so this is a great way too to make connections. This is also really smart to complete because companies actually look for talent on Handshake, just like you're looking for an internship. So a company could um, do filters for certain things, certain information. And um, when you have a complete profile, you're going to pop up in more and more of their searches. So then the company is actually reaching out to you to talk to you and you're not having to reach out to them. So again, it's a it's a win win that way. So definitely uh, consider completing your profile. Okay, so going back and looking at our internships here, um, again, this is just a great way to, to really um, be able to know what's out there and available. Now, if you're not ready to apply right then and there, you can do the little bookmark feature and it'll save it for you. So that way, next time you come in, you can just go to your bookmarks and it'll be right there for you. You don't have to do a whole nother search. So working to make it really easy for you uh, to find these opportunities. Um, and Handshake is just such an awesome tool uh, all around. Now, again, I did wanna showcase the events here and let you know about um, most events are virtual, of course, but there's so much going on uh, and so many things to take advantage of and ways that you can connect with different companies uh, through Handshake. Um, so uh, us here at the Mays Center work really hard to, to bring these things for you guys. And so we definitely want to make sure that you're a part of that. Um, so here's the information about the career fair. You can go in um, and check it out in advance. I do, I do recommend that you sign up today um, because you'll be able to 
look at all the employers, see what sessions they have open. Um, you'll be able to see everybody who's coming. Now, if you've never been to a career fair, I suggest that you just try it out. Um, see what it's like um, and, and just jump in because honestly, that is the best way to learn. Uh, and there's been so many successes I've seen of students who are just like, well, let me just try. I don't know everything I need to know. It's going to be tomorrow, but let me just go and, and see at least what it's like. Uh, and, and you'll be surprised. Definitely now, I feel like in our virtual space and in this COVID time, employers uh, and others are just really, you know, uh, much more gracious in the flexibility they give you when you don't really know how to um, to use maybe technology or you don't know as many things um, to get started. But again, if you have questions, um, our career advisors are here um, to work with you and um, you'll be able to, I, I believe there's chat features and stuff you can use tomorrow too throughout the fair. So, so that is Handshake and that um, I just really wanted to share that with y'all. So you got a good idea um, of where to start looking. Um, but of course, there's all different areas and ways uh, to do that. Um, um, so let's go back to our presentation here. And so um, thinking about, again, how are we finding uh, these internships, but then how do you also prepare? So when you do find one of those opportunities, uh, really making sure that you have a standout resume and that you know what the application process is like. That's another benefit of going to the career fair because if there's a company you're interested in, you can just ask them, can you tell me more about your application process? Every company does it a little bit differently. So it's really important and really valuable for you if you're able to get that information early and to check that out um, you know, from there. So, um, so make sure that you are prepared. And then that also includes interviewing. So practicing your interviewing. So when they call you, you're good to go and you're ready to schedule that interview and you feel comfortable and confident. We have a really great resource. It's called Big Interview. And the Big Interview resource um, is a way for you to practice virtually because your interview is probably gonna be virtual, um, to practice the skills that you need in order to be, uh, again, really well well prepared for your interview. Um, so all these resources available to you from the May Center, and we're here to, to work with you on that. We want to make sure that you're as successful as, um, as possible so you get the opportunities that you're looking for. Okay, so that's getting started. So let's move on to um, knowing, you know, what is right in an internship, because there are some differences. So we talked about um, when I was showing you Handshake, a paid internship, right? Um, and of course, we always want to get paid if possible for our opportunities. Um, but there are pay unpaid positions and in, in internships out there. And so it's important that you know, um, and that the company can, can clearly articulate maybe why they're not paying uh, for that kind of position. A lot of times you'll see that with nonprofits, um, non Nonprofits have uh, really limited budgets a lot of times. And so as long as, uh, you know, they're being very upfront and clear about what that means uh, and why it's an unpaid position and what are your expectations as such, um, then that's really important too. A lot of unpaid positions won't be requesting you to work 40 hours a week uh, for your internship. Uh, as well. And then um, also to the nature of your work uh, is really dependent. Now, if you have questions about that, or if you're seeing something and it looks a little fishy and you're just not sure, definitely let us know. Um, we can, you know, look into the opportunity as well uh, and make some recommendations or, or let you know you know, if there's anything that we've heard or seen from that specific organization or company about uh, their, their position. So we're always here again to be a resource. Also to think about, you know, how is this experience um, going to help in your trajectory of your career goals. So the quality of that experience is really important. I know there's like this old saying um, that interns usually like get coffee and make copies and file documents, right? But that's really something that happened decades ago and it's not the norm now. Uh, what we typically see with internship opportunities is that you have a lot of chance to work on projects, to collaborate with uh, the the actual professionals who are doing the job and uh, get a real quality experience there. But again, if you're questioning anything about it um, or you know you have any of those red flags that kind of pop up and you're like, I don't really know if that's, that's correct, let us know. We're here uh, to, to help with that too. And it's really about 
you being trained on what it is that's happening in the field, uh, in the job and industry that you're interested in. And so really take some time to, to make sure that, you know, what the qualifications or what the, the description is describing is something that is in alignment with what you want. So it kind of goes back to that first thing in considering what are your career goals and interests, right? Um, so it all comes together for that reason. All right, so basic expectations while you're at the internship. All right, so these guys are having a lot of fun, right? And it could be, I've heard a lot of great internships are fun, um, but there are some basic expectations that we wanna think about and follow. So first of all, be professional. Um, make sure you're dressing the part, making sure you're communicating as clearly as possible, you're following up um, on emails, um, you know, how you're talking to people, what your supervisor's asking for you. Um, there's lots of ways um, to, to think about how to be professional, especially if it's in an office workspace. Uh, but if, you know, you're in, you know, even a virtual space nowadays, there's a lot of remote internships that are popping up. And so you got to think about too, what does professionalism look like in that space even? Um, so great YouTube videos on this actually. And I really encourage you to just go and search YouTube on how to be professional. Uh, and you're going to get all kinds of information uh, from those. I really like YouTube. I've learned a lot myself from YouTube over the years. Uh, so if you have questions about that, but that's also a great question to ask a career advisor uh, here in the May Center. Uh, of course, be on time. Don't be using your phone all the time. These are really important uh, key things. You want to be focused. Uh, you want to show that you know, you're know you engaged, you're prepared. So being on time and limiting your, your phone use uh, really are big parts of that. Um, so think about those. And then really, how do you communicate? So again, I, I would say go to YouTube and, and search for some videos on communication strategies and resources or tools that you can use to be a good communicator. Um, because the more you communicate, the more questions you ask, the more um, prepared that you seem. And, and really, it's a great overall opportunity in that too. So uh, do be prepared. All right, is there a question? Joshua, yeah. you have a question? Yes. When you say communicate openly, uh, uh, explain that because I don't know what that, can, that means because there's a lot that I can communicate with, with uh, I, but I don't know, like, um, like what's the difference between communicate and complain? Because I can, I can communicate or, or but, but, but my manager, might might be like oh he's 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 just a complainer so then I just I just let my managers walk all over me uh, even though even though I really I really don't like it I just let them walk all over me and do whatever they want because because I don't want them I don't want them to see me as a complainer even yeah so so mm -hmm. what's a communicator what's a complainer because I just I just don't want to be a complainer and then, and then and then the manager and then the manager that I actually like. Uh, does it uh, like me? Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you, Joshua, for that question. Um, there's a couple of things there. Uh, first of all, it depends on um, what it is um, that you are needing to communicate and to talk about. So what, what the issue might be. Uh, and you kind of have to gauge and think about you know, is this an issue or the, a problem that's going to keep me from progressing in my work moving forward? Um, and if it's something that that is or if it's a consistent problem that you're you're having or seeing uh, and it is detracting from your work, then, yes, you want to consider, OK, we need to bring this up and we need to talk about this. Um, and then also timing. Timing makes a big difference, too, in communication and um, when you approach your your manager about this situation or about this issue, that can make a big difference too. So you gotta think about when are you gonna time this out um, to do that. Um, the third thing is what is your approach going to be uh, for them? So I always recommend practicing <laughs> it out, practicing what you're gonna say uh, to ensure that you do sound um, professional, but then also too that you're not in a like a, a negative head, headspace where it could turn into um, like a complaint or, um, or that you're just, you know, um, 
even, you know, throwing other people under the bus or anything like that. So, so there's some things to, to think about um, in terms of what will your approach be? How are you going to open up this conversation? Uh, and then what, what do you, the fourth thing I would say is what do you want the outcome to be? Um, do you want to just be heard and help them understand, hey, this is why I'm not um, as productive as I could be? Or is there a change that needs to happen? Does something need to change for you to be able to do that? And then how can you talk through getting that taken care of? Now, again, I'm going to say there's some really great YouTube videos on communication and all of these strategies. You can learn about negotiation. You can learn about difficult conversations and how to handle those. You can learn about um, how to approach somebody when you have a problem with them or with someone else. So again, I would say check out YouTube and see what you can learn. And I, I suggest that too. And I suggest that you look at multiple videos from multiple sources because you're going to find what is going to best suit you in your situation and how everybody communicates a little differently. And so what one person suggests might not work for you and your personality compared to what another suggests. So watch multiple people and multiple um, things to see what is going to work best with you. Does okay. that answer your question? Yes. Yeah, that is one of the tougher tougher things to, to learn and do and uh, definitely has taken me plenty of time in my own uh, career to learn that as well. So thanks for asking. Okay. Okay. In the interest of time too, we're gonna move forward uh, in our next slides. So thank you very much. All right, so how to prepare. So preparation is really important. And we wanna think about what goals we uh, have during our internship. So of course uh, you wanna know how do you dress, what technology is needed, how to contact your supervisor, that sort of thing. And again, all of these things should be provided from your internship um, supervisor or your contact before you even get started. And so hopefully you will know all these things, but just make sure you do, because again, you wanna put your best foot forward when you get started. Um, you also want to remember exactly what it is that you're going in for. So review what the job description was, um, do more research on the company. So know what their mission is, know who all the staff are that you might be working with. So that way, if you see them in the office or if you're on a meeting with them online, you can recognize them uh, and you'll be more familiar uh, with them as well. And so um, preparing ahead of time. And then, you know, this is a new learning experience for you. So just really be open to that and don't give yourself too much of a hard time. I know sometimes we can do that uh, to ourselves about not being able to do everything the best or right. You might even get some things wrong. You might have some bumps and um, or some failures along the way. That's okay because you're learning and this is a new experience. Uh, the final thing that we want to encourage and uh, do within this is we want to set our goals and we want to do SMART goals. So you may or may not have heard of this already, but SMART goals are a way for us to really clarify and really have um, a great framework for how we are um, creating the goals that we have for ourselves in an experience. And this could be used across the board in anything that you want in your life. If you're wanting to, you know, uh, get healthier, or if you're wanting to save money or anything like that, you can use the SMART goal um, framework for that too. So again, we want to be specific with what the goal is. So you want to have enough detail that you can actually picture what is this goal. Uh, and that's a really important part of the process here is if you can picture, if you can see it, like, again, you want to get healthy, you can see yourself eating healthy and exercising three times a week or something like that. So picture it. So be very specific. And then also has to be measurable. So what will success look like? So when I'm healthier, I will you know, have more energy or I'll be, you know, waking up at 6 a.m. instead of 8 a.m., right? So think about the measuring points that you can have within your goal. And then action oriented. So what um, steps do you need to take? So what action is going to be needed for you to meet this goal? So again, we're trying to get healthy. So let's think about, um, I need to wake up. Um, maybe 10 minutes early every day, like a little bit more every day. So I'll, I'll just set my alarm for 750 instead of eight. And then every day you kind of narrow that down until you're waking up at six o'clock, right? Um, so think about steps. 
And then also has to be realistic, right? So realistic means that I want to get healthy um, and I want to, you know, start working out three times a, a week, but maybe you're not working out at all. So maybe an action step and that's something that's more realistic is I'm going to start, you know, doing 10 minutes three times a day versus an hour, right? Or, or whatever the, the uh, measurable steps might be. But you want to be realistic with yourself, right? Because I know if you've never worked out, then it's really be like, I'm going to work out every day. Is that real for you, right? So just think about the realistic um, things, the constraints, barriers that you might have within um, getting this goal established. And then also, is it timely? So timely means that you need to give yourself a deadline. You need to give yourself maybe even several deadlines throughout the goal to be able to ensure that you're meeting um, maybe some benchmarks for yourself or that you do have a, a frame of when you're going to finish this because we can say we want to get healthy all day but if we don't give ourselves a timeline if we don't say okay by you know christmas i want to be waking up at 6 a.m so i can do a 20 30 minute workout right if you're not giving yourself a goal uh, an end goal, a deadline, then sometimes we just never start. We just like, oh, we'll do it tomorrow. Well, you know, it'll be next week now, you know? So, so tomorrow never really comes if you don't have a deadline, uh, especially when you have a goal. So do think about this framework uh, and think about how your goals for your professional development, uh, maybe Joshua, like you said, in communication, what's a smart um, goal structure that you can create for communication uh, within the workplace for yourself too. So again, these are things that um, we have lots of resources here on campus that can help you with that. Um, so we have um, academic um, success, success coaches, as well as uh, the career advisors who can maybe work with you in some of these things, especially how it relates to your career, or if it's an internship opportunity and you're wanting to create some goals there too. All right, so next we are going to go on to slide um, reflection. So reflecting on our goals is hugely important because we want to make sure that we are meeting those milestones, but we also want to make sure that we're doing what's required of us in our internship position and that our supervisor is on board with wanting to help us reach our goals as well. So you want to share them with your supervisor at your internship. You want to review them regularly. And this is really important because sometimes goals can shift and change as you are, um, you know, going through your time and your process. Uh, maybe if you're working on a project in your internship um, and you complete it early. Well, let's see, you know, what other things do we need to do or, um, you know, how can we regularly check in with our supervisor about what our goals are uh, for the experience. Um, now, if you do complete it early, create new goals. <laughs> so whenever you've completed a goal, set a new one, um, maybe stretch yourself a little bit more on the next one. You know, if, if it was something that was easier for you to obtain, then what can you do next uh, to just go a little bit further and, and uh, stretch yourself to learn the skill better or to even learn a new skill. And then of course, um, you can always self-reflect. So you no know, journaling is a really great way to reflect and think about what the experience has been like for you. Um, but then also to share with your peers. So if there's other interns that you're working with, you know, share about what your experience has been and theirs and, um, you know, think and talk about, you know, what you're learning um, or if you're doing it uh, in a class or for a class, there's definitely a lot of great reflection you can get there or just with your friends. You know, let them know what you've been doing and um, what your experience has been like and, and that sort of thing. And, and then y'all can share back and forth too. So lots of ways to reflect on your goals. And it's really important to, to keep in mind that, that that's what helps facilitate our learning and our experience and being able to, to utilize and um, create that, um, that better uh, understanding for ourselves in the future. All right, we're almost done here and then we'll be on to our game. So the final, uh, one of the final things you wanna think about and how you can be really successful during your internship process is thinking about going the extra mile. So say yes to opportunities that come up during your experience. So maybe you're working on a project, but you get you know, your supervisor or somebody else you're working with says, hey, um, do you have a minute? I really could use some help doing X, Y, and Z. Um, so definitely think about how you can do that 
um, while you're still working on your project to meet your goals and responsibilities. Now, if it's something that you know you absolutely do not have time for and you can't do, it's okay to, to decline and say that you're not able, but uh, do try to say yes to as much as possible because again, you're learning, right? And you're gaining as much experience as you can. Um, showing 110% is always an awesome way to go. That means you're doing everything. You're, you're showing up early. Um, you're asking, you know, questions. You're, um, you know, putting everything that you can into what your tasks are, what the skills that you're learning and developing are. Um, also, you want to network with other colleagues, so other people that you're working with. So it could be that, you know, maybe you're an accounting internship and you're working with three others on your team for accounting, and that's great, but, you know, maybe you you know, want to learn some more about the finance part or the marketing aspect of the job. So seek out those people and network and spend some time, ask them questions. Um, most companies and most professionals are open to, to answering questions and wanting to participate actively in your success in the internship and, and sharing what they know. Taking the lead is important as well. So if they were in a project with several others, maybe there's other interns uh, working on the project too, don't be afraid to take the lead maybe in one aspect of the project or at, for the team as a whole, um, because those are gonna lead to some really great experiences. And those are skill sets that are needed across the board, anywhere, anytime. Also, you wanna ask questions and ask for feedback and do this regularly too. Um, don't feel like you have to know everything. It is okay to ask questions. And a lot of times I've been a supervisor of interns myself. I really want them to ask questions. If you're not asking questions, sometimes I'm like, do you think you know everything? And why do you think you know everything? So it's perfectly fine and really recommended that you do that. And for feedback too. So if it's not already part of what is built into the internship program, if there's no evaluations or anything like that set up, it's important as you're meeting with your supervisor to ask them, hey, how am I doing? <laughs> you know, is there anything I can improve on? Is there any ways I can communicate better perhaps uh, and see what they say? Being enthusiastic, of course, we want to be excited to be there. Uh, enthusiasm goes a huge, huge, huge long way. Um, I can say from personal experience, I have shown a lot of enthusiasm when I really did not know what I was doing, and it worked out really well. So uh, being enthusiastic makes a difference there too. Uh, and then if you can complete something special or aside from what you're already doing, um, doing special projects always helps you to stand out, always helps you to learn more. And then if you present too, oh my goodness, presentation skills, hugely, hugely important. And that will just make you uh, really stand out and show that you're going the extra mile. Okay, final, this is it, best practices after. So what do we do when we're leaving? Of course, we're gonna reflect again. So reflect on your complete experience. Asking for feedback again is hugely important. You wanna know how you did. You wanna know if there's anything you could do better next time. Think about your skills that you've developed and put them on your resume. Oh my goodness, this whole experience is a perfect, perfect thing for your resume, perfect thing for you to talk about in interviews in the future. So really think about how you're gonna do that. Find a mentor, so it might be your supervisor, somebody else that you worked with. Um, and then show interest in future opportunities. If they have positions open and you're ready to work, then let them know, I loved working here, I love this experience, and I would love to be a part of the team full time. Uh, follow up, make sure projects are finished, follow up with others that maybe you've connected with um, to keep up with people. And of course, you wanna thank them. You wanna thank everybody you've worked with uh, for their time, for um, the experience that they had. And writing out a card, it actually goes a long way. It might seem a little old fashioned or maybe cheesy, but a handwritten thank you card um, is just really meaningful. I've received several in my career and I actually still have them <laughs> because I like it. It's so nice um, that you took the time to do that and it's really appreciated. All right, y'all. So of course, the May Center is here for you. Uh, we have resources and services to take advantage of. So please stay connected with us. And here's the contact information. Again, my contact information, I'd be happy to um, to talk to you, um, direct you to wherever I can. Um, so you get whatever services and info that you need uh, for that. All right, so um, screen sharing is done. So now we're going to move on to our fun family feud game. 
All right. And um, as we start this, we're actually going to, um, we don't have too many people on actually <laughs> um, to play. So we have Elena and Joshua. Elena, are do you want to play the, the family feud game with us? Sure, I'll play. Okay, great. And uh, Joshua, uh, you're you're down to play as well, correct? Yes. Okay, so this is really a game with two teams. And so each of you are going to be your own team. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay, cool. So you have a 50-50 shot of uh, winning uh, the Family Feud game. So um, I'm going to, for team one, that is going to be Joshua. So you're team one. And then team two is going to be Elena. All right. All right, y'all. Well, we're uh, going to get started with that. Let me go ahead and share my screen uh, for that one as well. And then I'm also going to introduce our special guest host for our family feud. All right, so we will be back shortly. One sec. Ah, it's not sharing. Okay, there we go. Going, it's not going. have you all uh, on our game. All right, so we're going to get started um, with some of our questions here. Now, we don't have any teams yet with any points, so let me go ahead and share that. Now, um, Joshua and Elena, have you played Family Feud before? Uh, maybe one. A couple of times. Yeah. A couple of times. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and look at what the rules are for our game today. All right, so we're gonna divide into two teams, check. I will read the question entirely and then you can buzz in. Now buzz in is that you are the first person to put in the chat your team number. So Joshua, you are team one, so you put the number one in the chat and Elena, team two, so you put the number two in the chat, right? All right, then we are going to, um, if your team, you're get to guess, okay? So say Joshua buzzed in first, you get to guess the answer. Now, when you receive the correct answer, you can either play the board so you can guess more, or you can pass it on to Elena and she'll have to play the board, okay? Now, the team that has control, you have to reveal all the correct answers. You will have 10 seconds to answer and then it's a strike. So you have 10 seconds to think about, you know, what might be the next answer. And then it's a strike um, if you can't do it within that time. Uh, now, if the team receives three strikes without clearing the board, then control is passed to the other team. Okay, so for example, Joshua, you get three strikes um, and the board still has um, clues on it. And then it can go to Elena and she can, um, she can actually answer. So if she answers correctly, then she is going to uh, win the round and all the points that are on the board. But if not, if she gets an X, then that means, uh, Joshua, you would get all of the points for that round. So we'll reveal all the unchosen answers. There's four rounds in this game. Uh, and of course, the team with the most points in all four rounds will win the game. So woohoo. All right, any questions before we get started? I don't have any, let's do it. Let's do it, we're ready. Joshua, you ready? Yes. Okay, cool, cool. All right, so let's go ahead and play our first round. All right, here is the question. Basic expectations during an internship. During an internship. All right, who has chatted in and I do have a special co-host Joelle who's going to help me to know so again when you buzz in you got to put in your team uh, number into the chat 
Elena was first. Okay. All right, <laughs> Elena. So basic expectations during the internship. What do you say? Um, uh, timeliness. Timeliness. Let's see. Survey says be on time. Right. Very good. Very good. All right, Elena, do you want to uh, do this board or you want to pass it on to Joshua? Uh, I'll give him my best shot. <laughs> okay, great. It's great. All right. So um, what are basic expectations during the internship? What other answers can we reveal? Um, let's see. Um, uh, communication with supervisor or just, yeah, I'm going to go with that one. Okay, let's see. Survey says communicate openly. Good job, good job. All right. What's your next guess? Um, hmm. Let's see, collaborate. <laughs> collaborate. Let's see. Survey says... Oh, that is not on the board, unfortunately. Collaborate. Okay, so that's one strike. Two strikes left, but we still have plenty of options on the board. What else do you think? All right. Um, let's see. Um, I'm going to go with like completing projects. Completing projects. Do we have completing projects? Not on this board. Nope. Okay, so that strikes your final one. What do you say? What's next? All right. Um, let's see. Uh, I'll say networking. Networking. So do we have networking here? Oh, not on this board either. Okay. But two good answers on the board there. So now it goes over to Joshua. Joshua, if you get one correct, you will take over the board. So um, your guess. Dress for success. Dress for success. Survey says. Doo, doo, doo. All right. Dress for success. So good job, Joshua. You actually took over the board. So we are going to reveal the final answers. So four, limit cell phone use, taking initiative, and our top answer, be professional. So those are the best basic expectations during an internship. So good job. We will go ahead and move on to the next round. Okay, so again, we're gonna go head to head. So after I read the question, the first person in the chat is the one um, who leads. Um, but let's go ahead and add up our points first. So Joelle, um, how many points do we have for team one? Um, for team one, we have 30 points. 30 points, okay. And since he stole the board, there are, is it still zero for team two, correct? Yes. All right, okay, so three more rounds to go. Here we go, round two. All right, so here's the question. Things you can do to go the extra mile. Things you can do. Who was our first to buzz in? In the chat, did somebody put one or two? Mm, not yet. Not yet. Yeah. I, I know. Right. Number two is first. Okay. All right. So well, my mouse disappeared. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Hmm. I see a little bit to here. All right. No, it's not clicking. <laughs> oh no. Technical difficulties. Please wait a moment. Let me stop sharing real quick. Let me try this again. Okay. Thank you guys for being patient. Okay, here we go. So I believe, yeah, we're still on round two. Hmm, this is weird. Okay, <laughs> big technical difficulty now. Not sure why. 
this is not working. Okay, so thank you for standing by um, and working with me for a second as I try to figure out why my mouse is not showing up here. Hmm. Very interesting. All right, I'm going to stop sharing again. I can't click on anything. It won't show my mouse. Okay, yeah, sometimes you just have stuff like this that happens in life. All right, let's try over again one more time. Again, thank you so much for being patient as we get this to work. We have the question and um, okay, so remind me which team is going to be answering extra mile. I think it's me. Okay. All right, Elena. So what can you do to go the extra mile? Sure. Um, so definitely asking for feedback. Ask for feedback. Let's see. Survey says. All right. Now this is uh, your board or you could pass it on to Joshua. Um, I think I'll pass it on to Joshua. <laughs> okay, all right. So Joshua, you are up. Um, what does, uh, what, what is your guess? Uh, do a project. Do a project, survey special projects. All right, Joshua, what else can you do to go the extra mile? Uh, make, uh, make, make someone coffee. Make someone coffee, let's see. Survey says, oh, now while that is a really nice gesture and I'm sure they'll like that, it's not one on the board for now. All right, you still have two strikes though to go. So what would be your next guess? Um, uh, do, ask questions. Ask questions. Let's see. Survey says, ask questions. Very good. Awesome. Okay, next. What do you think? Going the extra mile. Uh, speaking to people outside of your field uh so find people outside of your field we will say survey says networking that is finding field. all right we will take it uh what else four more options on the board here uh, it's not stay off your phone <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's not that okay five seconds Four. Okay. Then three. X. Two. One. X. <laughs> you can't think of it. <laughs> okay. That's all right. That's all right. Um, other guesses. Let's see. You still got four options. Going the extra mile. Uh, then. Um, uh, Saying, um, Five, four, three, three, three two, <laughs> one. Oh, unfortunately, that was up with that. Now, Elena, you uh, have the opportunity to steal the board if you can guess one of these four. Ooh, um. I don't know how to phrase it, but like take the initiative to to talk to your, I don't know that, <laughs> just talk to your supervisor, I guess, have supervision time. Talk to your supervisor, have supervision time, survey says. <laughs> no, unfortunately, <laughs> that one is not on the board. All right, so what we did have though, um, say yes. 
show 110%, take the lead, and showing enthusiasm. All right. So I believe that um, went to team one, to, to Joshua in that round. Okay, so what is our new score? So Joshua adds 56 points, bringing him up to 86. 86, all right. Again, we still have two rounds. So team two, there's still a chance to, to pull it on through. So let's go ahead and head into our next round. All right, don't forget your buzzer is to catch your team number one or two into the box. So question, internship goals should be? Internship goals should be? Who is our first team to buzz in? Do we have one yet? Not yet. Anybody want to just take some guesses? Just buzz yeah, in your number. Nice first. Okay, then. All I'll right. Just... <laughs> Joshua. <laughs> okay, then to network. All right. So internship goals should be to network. Let's see. Survey says. <laughs> no, unfortunately not on this board, but that is a good goal to have. <laughs> what other, uh, oh, actually, since um, that was not on the board, uh, Elena, it would go to you to try to, to guess on the board. Oh, okay. Hmm. Um, did you say it should be SMART goals? Can you be more uh, specific than that? Sure, so um, so internship goals should be um, for one specific. Okay, let's see, survey says specific, yes. All right, Elena, so you get to choose. Do you wanna do this board or you wanna uh, give it to Joshua? Um, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> give it a shot, all right, here we go. All right, so what other uh, ways should internship goals be? Um, let's see. So they should be timely. Timely. Let's see. Survey says timely. All right. Moving right along. What else do you think? Go ahead and say that they probably should be measurable. Measurable. Survey says Measurable. Right. What's next? It looks like you're get, getting this. <laughs> All right. Um, I always forget the A. The, um, oh, uh, internship goals should always be attainable. Attainable. Let's see. Survey says. Ooh, not obtainable for this one. Let's see. Um, I guess my last guess is going to be realistic. Realistic. Let's see. Survey says, yes, realistic. We're still in the game. Still going. Awesome. Okay. Let's see. My last guess. Mm. No, I'm not sure. Um, internship goals should be, would it be like, Uh, Five seconds, <laughs> four, three, two, one. What is it? Did I say achievable or attainable? You said attainable. Okay, I'll go with achievable. <laughs> achievable, okay. Survey says achievable. <laughs> Not on this board. Yeah, it's that A, right? What does the A stand for? All right, so now that means... Um, that Elena, since you stole the board, um, no, you you chose to, to take the board. So Joshua, you have a chance now to steal the board. Uh, so Joshua, if you can guess one of the three clues that are still up, then you can uh, win the round. Uh, it's not actionable. <laughs> uh, 
uh, something with an A, but uh, actionable. It's not attainable. Not the other. Uh, let me give you five seconds. Okay, I'm gonna just go. Uh, action, actionable. A C T. Actionable. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see. Survey says action oriented. Wow. <laughs> That is the A, yes, action oriented or actionable uh, will, will work as well. All right, so um, that means that Joshua has uh, the board here for round three. So what is our new total for the teams? Okay, so Joshua stole 43 points, bringing him up to 129. 129. Okay. All right. So we're going to go into our last round and it uh, definitely is tougher <laughs> for team two, but there is still anybody's game and there's still a great opportunity. Here. Okay. So final round. Here we go. So question is, best practices after an internship? After an internship, who's going to buzz in? Anybody's guess? All right, it looks like team one has buzzed in first, Joshua. All right, Joshua, what does the survey say? A, apply what you learned. Apply what you learned. Let's see. Survey says not on this board, but that is a good thing to do. <laughs> you definitely want to apply what you've learned. All right. So um, now it is Elena's turn to steal the board. Uh, if you have one of the eight guests on here. Oh, yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Send a thank you letter. Send a thank you letter. Survey says, thank you card. Yes. Awesome. All right, Elena. Well, the board is yours. So what should you do after an internship? Um, I want to say update your resume, but I'm not sure that that's it. All right. Well, let's see what the survey says. Add it to your resume. Absolutely. Good job, good job. Okay, you're still alive here. So what does the survey say? I kind of want to do go with what Josh said earlier, which is kind of like take take like um, inventory of like what you've learned. Like, I don't know. I'll say that, inventory of your skills. Inventory of your skills. So survey says, yes, identify new Hey, you're on a hot streak here. So what else? Let's see. Um, hmm. I don't know if you should prepare for a new, not a new experience, but like a new uh, internship or job search. Prepare for a new internship or job search. Ooh, no, unfortunately not on this board, but you still have, you actually have two strikes left because that strike was uh, for team one. So what other things could you do after an internship? Best practices. Hmm. Not sure. Let's see. Give you five more seconds, four, three, two, one, nope. Okay, this is your final shot. <laughs> Do you think of something? Got one more chance? Um, I guess I'll just say, um, make sure you keep in touch, so network. Keep in touch, network. Uh, let's see, survey says, do follow up, which we did. Networking. All right. You're still alive here. Still going. <laughs> okay. Four more guesses. 
Mm, that is tough. Uh, let's see. Mm. Give me five more seconds. Yeah, these are good. Missed you. Three, two. I think we're out of guesses. <laughs> one out of guesses. All right. No worries there. Um, okay, so since Elena uh, was able to steal the board, the um, the final board is hers uh, for this game. So we're gonna see what the others were. So the top answer was to reflect. So woohoo, reflection, very key and important. And you did say that, but then you said reflect with your skills. <laughs> so it was a, a little bit too there. I was hoping that you said reflect again, but it's all good. We have asked for feedback. So how did you do in the experience and in your finding a mentor and for showing interest? What other opportunities do they maybe have uh, for you? Um, can you work for them full time? All right, everybody. Our four rounds. We have the new team. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a short word from our sponsors while we add up the totals on the board. So Joelle, uh, my fabulous co-host, is going to help us out with that. And we will be right back. Fantastic. So we are back. Thank you so much. We hope you join us for additional events for the rest of this week uh, and look for more events through the May Center throughout. Okay, so let's do our final here of the winners for our family feud in our first experience here. Seth, so we ended the round. The final scores, team one with 129 points for. And we have team two with 46 points for total. Bringing it together at the end. Awesome. So congratulations uh, to our winner. We were so excited to have you on to play our family feud. And um, again, hope you learned a lot in our session today. Uh, we look forward to seeing you at more events and we hope you have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to spay and neuter your pets. All right now. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. You too, bye.